Good morning, family and friends. I'm going to be speaking about fellowship. Amen. Through righteousness. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. This will be session. Let me see. What session did I last? I think I did session 10. This will be session 11. So, fellowship through righteousness. God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1 9. The, through whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you think the Father would call us into fellowship with his son if we were not righteous? Do you think John could write 1 John 1, 14 under the direction of the Holy Spirit if we were not righteous? That which was from the beginning, that means the incarnation, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we have, which we beheld and our hands handled concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare unto you the life, the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So the eternal life was Jesus. Now we can understand what it means. He that hath the Son hath the life. Jesus is that eternal life which was manifested. And notice the next two verses, that which... That which we have seen, that which we have heard, declare we unto you. Why? That you also may have fellowship with us. Yea, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So we are not only into fellowship with the Son, but we are also into fellowship with the Father. So the word fellowship is translated from the Greek word, which is translated communion in some places. So communion and fellowship are identical. They mean blissful harmony. They mean that our spirits and the Holy Spirit through the word are in perfect accord. Now we are assuming the positions of sons. Now. Now we are assuming so we're bearing the burdens of the master in his stead. We are fellowshipping with him. We are taking over his burdens. We are fellow, or excuse me, our fellowship is manifold. We have fellowship with the father. We have fellowship with the, the son. We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We have fellowship with the word. And we also have fellowship with each other. Amen. Right. So the most vital and, and the one that means the most to us is our fellowship with the word. We have this revelation from the heart of the father to feed upon. Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So daily we feed and we meditate upon the word until men and women feel the presence and power of the unseen one in our lives. So we face life's problems fearlessly, right? Revelations 12 and 1, and they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. So the word is Logos. It is Jesus. They overcame him by the word that was in their lips. So he tells us in 1 John 1, 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. And do not, and the truth is not in us. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So the thing that makes the church the most beautiful place in the world is not the building. It's the people. And we actually are the church. It's the people who are in fellowship with one another and with the Lord Jesus. 
So the moment that we sin, note, the moment that we sin against a brother, some in the churches are not seemingly getting this because there's an awful lot of division seen in the churches. But the moment that we sin against our brother, we break fellowship with Jesus. Amen? And when we break fellowship with him, then we go into darkness. And there's no getting out of that darkness until we confess our sins. 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we confess our sin to the Father, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us. If a man should say, you know, I have fellowship with the Father, Somehow or other, I have lost it, and yet I have not committed sin. The man actually is ignorant, or else he is lying, because the Father does not withdraw his fellowship unless we have sinned. So if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So this has reference to the broken fellowship. Amen. Let me let me say that again. This has reference to the broken fellowship. No man needs to stay in broken fellowship. So acting on 1 John 1 and 9, it restores righteousness to him. No human religion, no philosophy, no works that natural man can do will ever give him fellowship with the Father or righteousness which makes it possible for him to stand in the Father's presence without sin consciousness. So in other words, no man can have fellowship with the Father and be free from sin consciousness until he is a new creation, until he becomes, until he becomes the righteousness of God in Christ. Not in heaven right now. But the, the instant a man is born again, he becomes the righteousness of God in Christ. Then he has fellowship with the Father. He can stand in the Father's presence as though he had never sinned. Ephesians 1 verse 4, Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish before him. In love, having marked us out for the position of sons. So this is God's declaration in this present life, not in heaven. We're not waiting till we get to heaven. This is God's declaration that is in this present life. He planned that we should be holy. He planned this and, and that we should be without spot or blemish before him this is not after we die this is today this is right now that holiness and beauty of life is all of grace not of ourselves so the only thing that we do is receive it accept it with joy ephesians five twenty five, speaking of christ and the church and using marriage as an illustration says husbands Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for it, that he might sanctify it, having cleansed it by the washing of water with the word that he might present the church to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So note, he does not say that the church is going to be a conqueror after it gets to heaven, but that it's a conqueror right now. We, the church, are conquerors right now. It's not going to be sanctified after it gets to heaven, but right now. It's not going to be cleansed by the washing of the word after it gets to heaven, but right now. So the word is the thing that brings knowledge the the exposition of the word makes men spiritual it takes them it makes them hungry 
for the word so that they study the word for themselves. Hunger will make you go after the word. Hunger will cause you to pray. Hunger will cause you to, to do whatever you have to do to seek the Lord. Hunger will, uh, for the, the Lord will cause you to be isolated at times, just to be away and alone with him. Just like Jesus used to go out into the desert places. The church without spot or wrinkle is the church that has been cleansed through the word of God. It's not cleansed by prayer only, but by the word. It is the spirit that uses the word to build the life of Christ into us. Colossians 1 verses 21 and 22 gives us another picture of the church. It says, and you being in time past alienated and enemies in your mind, in your evil works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and without blemish and unreprovable before him. Now, this is a beautiful picture of the recreated body, reconciled, holy, without blemish, without reproof, standing before the Father, not only clothed in the righteousness of Christ, but actually partakers of his righteousness. So, okay, this is a picture of our present walk in Christ, Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 says that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. So this new creation is created out of righteousness. Righteousness is, is the nature of Father God. We have partaken of that righteousness, that nature of God. So we are to put on the conduct of the new man in our daily walk. We are to no longer talk like the old man. The old man lived in failure. The old man lived in selfishness and greed and fear. The new man lives in the fullness of love. The old creation and the, the, the new are as far apart as God and Satan are. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21, it says, Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep with the blood of an eternal covenant, even our Lord Jesus, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. It is the purpose it is the purpose of the risen Christ to make us perfect in every good thing to do his will. It is his business to work in us his own good pleasure, making us beautiful in the sight of the Father. Philippians 1 and 6 carries us a step further into this, being confident it says of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. So you're in, we're all in that perfecting process every single day of our life as long as we're submitting to God. He has begun his good work. He started it uh, at the new birth, at your new birth. And now he's taking the things of Jesus and building them into us. So it began at your new birth. If you look at that, you know, as many times it's been explained as a newborn baby, you know, you're in the process of growth. So God is building in you. He is your cornerstone. He is the, he is the firm foundation of your life as soon as you became born again. And then he begins to build on that, taking the things of Jesus and building into us. The very life of Christ is being built into us. This is done by, by our living in the word and the word dominating our daily walk. The, the, the love 
nature it must gain the influence in us until our words our words our actions our deeds are soaked in love until our whole spirit is held in a solution as it were of the love nature of the father so philippians 2 13 becomes a glorious reality to us for it says for it is god who has at work within you willing and working his own good pleasure in you i think i'm trying to think how it says it in the uh, new king james God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it is God reproducing himself in us. We are to live and walk and talk in love. 1 Peter 5 and 10 has another sweet message for our hearts. And, and the God of all grace who called you unto his eternal glory in Christ. After that ye have suffered... Uh-oh. Maybe somebody didn't teach you we're going to suffer in this life a little bit. After ye have suffered a little while, shall himself perfect, establish, and strengthen you. So we may be going through hard places. We may be suffering. There may not be much happiness for us in this life at times, but there can be joy. Happiness comes from our surroundings. Joy comes from our recreated hearts. So we have him in our hearts. He will strengthen us, establish us until our lives become like Jesus. Like Jesus' life. Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2. Be ye therefore imitators of God also beloved children or children of love what what would we do if if we imitated god this is what we would do we would love we would walk in love even as christ also loved you and gave himself up for you we are to give ourselves up as a sweet fragrant offering of love to the world Does that offend some of you? Hopefully not. We are to give ourselves up as a sweet, fragrant offering of love to the world, allowing Christ to live and dwell through us. You know, they might criticize and they might hate us, but we love them. We walk in love toward them and until we love as he loves we do not represent him. He never answered back. He never said unkind things. He never criticized. He never scammed people. He spoke loving words. He, he helped men and women. He said beautiful things to people. This walking in love is the most beautiful thing in the world. God is love. We are born of love. Love is the rule, and it's the law of our life. Love is the strength of our life. Love is the very beauty of our life. We are walking as he walked. This is the righteousness of God in us. It is, in reality, our life in Christ. 1 John 4, 17 says, Herein is love made perfect with us, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, even so are we in this world. So we are here as he is up there. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. We are living in love. We have come to believe in love. We know that he is love. We know that we are abiding in love. We know that love is abiding in us. And this is the secret of faith. This revelation to Paul and to John is basically it's a series of pictures of us that our Father has put in his album. We're finding ourselves complete in him.
Colossians 2, verses 9 and 10 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and in him you are made full, who is the head of all principality and power. So in closing, that is how we appear to our Father. That is the way love sees us, even as it saw him. It sees us as new, a new creation, a new love creation, ruled by love, living in love, and letting love live in us, allowing love to live in us. And all this is possible. All this is ours in Jesus. But you know what? We must receive it. We must receive it from him. And any, excuse me, anything that is not of him, we must reject it. We must renounce it. Submitting those things to God and resisting resisting the devil amen and yes we have a lot of opposition here opposition comes our way but we have authority and we've got to learn if we have not learned already we've got to learn to take our authority but in regard to this new this life hid with christ this this new love creation ruled by love living in love letting love live in us all of this is possible there is not anything that is impossible with God. So all of this is ours. It has been paid for in full by Jesus. And as I said, we must receive it. That's all. We must receive it. Amen.